What's good with you? What's up, C1? CN1? You did? Peggy! Let me give you an interesting fact about this young man right here. And why he ain't get his just due. I don't feel like it. <sighs> Give me your resume, young man. My resume. I'm the head football coach at the University of Maryland. No, 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 no. no. Before that, we're going to get to all okay. that. Okay. I was working backwards. Uh, prior to that, I was the offensive coordinator at Alabama. Did y'all do numbers? Uh, we, 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 did, we did okay. We did some numbers. <laughs> well, well, what's okay? Because you're trying to be I, modest and you're trying to I be I don't numbers. know. I, I, to be honest, I, I just know we did everything but win the big one at the end. Mm. Um, but I, I had three pretty good quarterbacks, uh, Tua Tungavailoa, Jalen Hurts. Had a bunch of receivers, Waddle, Ooh, was, Judy, huh? Ruggs, Smitty. Right. Uh, they all known. I had like a bunch of running backs, Josh Jacobs, Ooh. Damian Harris, uh, Brian Robinson, Najee Harris. Ooh. A really talented group. Uh, tight ends, Irv Smith. And now, head football coach at the University of Maryland. Yeah. Is it true what they say back in your Alabama days that they used to play paper, scissors, rock? <laughs> for the route. <laughs> so I had what was called a touch chart where going into a game, each player knew how many times I was going to try to get them the ball based on how they practiced. Mm. If you're a receiver, you had a bunch of drops, a bunch of busts all week long, you probably weren't going to get a bunch of touches. And so wow. it became really competitive to get touches because the one thing I found as a coordinator that if your best player touches the ball enough, and I think you know a little bit about this, sure. that if the best player touches the ball you'll put up numbers. For sure. And so, you know, I, I kind of tracked how many times I wanted certain guys to get the ball. And, you know, there's a reason that Josh Jacobs, who some people thought was the third tailback. Right. Because you had Damian who started, Najee right. who played. But he got drafted in the first round, and, mm. and, and, and Damian got drafted in the third round. And it wasn't because Damian wasn't a good player. But right. it's, it's when you get loaded. touches. Josh, when Josh got his touches, he took advantage of those opportunities. For sure. I think really where you are – in this space of head coaching, what's the biggest misconception being a coordinator and being a head coach? I, I say this, um, you know, I'm here for the coalition, the National Coalition for Minority Football Coaches. There's a reason I'm here for Radio Row, right. my part-time job. I'm trying to help minorities get opportunities to be head coaches. Right. Whether you're in college or whether you're in the NFL, and I think you would appreciate this, players need and want lion tamers. Mm. They want people that can hold them accountable, mm. people that's going to tell them the truth, even if it hurts. And that's one of the strengths that I think we have, I have as a, a head coach, is the ability to kind of be a lion tamer where you, you you know, I heard Jay-Z say the other day, he said, I get nervous when I tell the truth. Yeah. Sometimes, well, the truth is, is that, you know, we got some coaches now that are doing it that are real, X's and O guys, and X's and O's are good, but right. – you Relatability. Gotta, the, yeah, yeah, you got to be able to get the guys to play hard, execute, and all those things. And the only way you do it is by having accountability. I think that's a fact. That's a snapple fact. And to add to that, I says it's relatability, right? Mm -hmm. It's not the ones that's trying to change me. Don't try to change me. It's relate to me. Meet you where you're at. Meet me where I'm at. And yeah. just to know how to speak my language. Because I, I can tell you this as a coach. Some coaches are rah-rah guys. Some coaches are like, listen, business associate. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. They carry they, their, their, their coaching style like a business. Yeah. Be on me, be at meetings all the time. They're not going to do all the extra texting. That's just not who they are. You know what I'm saying? You got some corny coaches. You got some cool coaches that aren't good actual Ain't coaches. Good coaches right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's a fine mix. I think when you build your roster of coaches, right, the thing that you have to take into place in your position, can they recruit? Can they recruit? Can they develop? Mm. And can they manage? I tell wow. every coach on my staff that if you do those three things, you might be able to do two really well and maybe one not so well. I'm going to work with you to build that up, just like you do as a skill, as a football player. Right. you got to build up your weaknesses. But every coach is responsible for recruiting to his position or his area, managing the players under his position group, keep them out right. of my office, keep them off list, deal with those issues, and then develop them for the next level. And if you recruit, manage, and develop, you'll have a job. You don't have to ever worry about having a job. Yes, sir. I think really, too, when you're talking about minorities and opportunities, one of the biggest – 
kind of drop-offs, too, in the NFL for a long time has been minorities and backup roles. Mm-hmm. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, when I think about it, I see Tyrod Taylor, uh, Teddy Bridgewater. Um, so my guy, he was in uh, Miami. Um, but a handful of guys. You don't see the Charlie Batches like you, like you see – a Derek Anderson, you know what I'm saying? And Derek's my guy, but I'm just using him as a Caucasian example. How would you answer, how can we be better at that? You know, just placement and opportunity. And that's, that's really what the coalition, when I started the coalition in 2020, um, it started, I grew up in what was called the Black Coaches Association. And coaches like John Thompson, Nolan Richardson, George Raveling, John Chaney, on the basketball side, we've always been well represented. Mm-hmm. And during the era of me growing up, the late 80s in high school, you know, we had Prop 48, Prop 42, and mm. Coach Thompson and those guys where they had to meet certain SAT requirements, and they stood up for those causes. And the Black Coaches Association was formed to basically champion being an advocate for black coaches. Well, I just took that same type of organization but I've made it football centric Yeah. because when you look at football football is where the money is it's the money pit in college and it's the yeah. money in the NFL it's the, the gr- highest grossing revenue sport well basketball is represented with minority coaches and For leadership sure. baseball former baseball players are most managers are former baseball players yeah. in hockey most of their ca- uh, coaches are former players well for as many minorities that have played the game of football, why is it we're lacking in the minority leadership sure. at the top? In the most dominant the most minority dominant. sport. And, and so what, what I've tried to do, instead of just coming up with problems, I wanted to come up with solutions. Mm. I'm a solution-based guy. So during the pandemic, when we dealt with racial inequity and all these things, right. I called Mike Tomlin. I said, Mike T., we came into business together. I said, we're back on the back nine of our careers. I, I used to be the young coach. Now right, I got right, this right. gray beard and look like a black Santa Claus. And yeah. I, I said, We're on the back nine, bro, and this thing ain't getting no better. We got to do something or find a way to create a foundation to lead the game better. And I still believe that the most value you'll ever create for yourself is when you do something for others or a cause bigger than your own. That's where you get those those good feelings inside of you. Yeah. And uh, and so with Mike T's help, and then I got Nick Saban on board, Bill Polian, Rick Smith. We we created the National Coalition for Minority, Minority Football Coaches, and now our job is to champion and advocate to help get us opportunities. Not tell you who to hire, but tell you that we got some guys that can do the job. And then you look at the NFL, just filled four jobs with minorities. Antonio Pierce here in Vegas. I like that. Gerard up in New England. You got Raheem recycled over there in In uh, Atlanta. Atlanta. And then David Canales in Carolina is a minority coach. And the one thing that jumps out about, or the common denominator is, all these organizations have familiarity with these coaches. Right. Raheem worked under Arthur Blank as the D coordinator. Antonio was here as an assistant, and they got to know him. Uh, it's something about getting to know. Gerard played for New England. Correct, correct. D'Amico Ryan was drafted by Houston, and right, he's played in them. Texas. So it's not that people aren't hiring us because of our ethnicity. They're hiring us because they don't know us. Right. See, you've been in the room with those owners because you were the quarterback. Yes, and sir. You, and so you have relationships. Well, it's about getting to know people and through the coalition we've created this academy where we pair up and coming coordinators with athletic directors for a mentorship program for a course of two years we saw marcus freeman who came through the academy get the notre dame job sharon moore just got the michigan job he was, he's in our academy presently and so we're doing some good stuff but we still got a lot of work to do in terms of getting it out that we've got minority coaches that are capable of doing the job as leaders absolutely man coach appreciate you bro now as we air you here, always. as we end things here, one hand out, one hand out. Oh, one hand out, okay. Follow instructions. Are okay. you coachable, coach? I'm very coachable. But say less. I, yeah. When I say all together, you're going to say one love. Make sense? I got you. One finger, one pinky, one thumb, all together, one, one love. love. There you go.